do it. <laughs> Hello everybody and welcome to the season finale episode of ACMG TV. I'm your host Xavier Josiah, here to provide you with all things anime, comics, movies, and games. Uh, we're just going to jump right into it. We got uh, just a little bit of news to talk about, but then we're going to jump over to the playground to review not one, but two games. One of them being Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse for the PlayStation 4, as well as Dead or Alive Last Round. So guys, without further ado, let's get to it. Do it. The hottest news so far is in baseball and fan films and The Lost of a Legend. But let's start with the fan films. Two fan films, indie films actually, have been uh, out and uh, been creating a lot of uh, attention now. Uh, one of them being Dragon Ball Z Light of Hope, which is a Kickstarter program that came out. And uh, it has uh, gained a lot of attention for its accuracy. Uh, it just, they, they've done a lot of work to make this exactly like you would watch the cartoon in the old anime series. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, go on YouTube, check it out. It's going to be a series of these episodes, about like 13 minutes long so far, maybe longer as it goes along. But um, they have done such a great job and hopefully this will inspire them to maybe hire the people responsible for this to actually do an actual full length movie because they have all the tools to make it happen. Uh, also uh, that has come out which raised a storm of controversy is uh, the bootleg version of the Power Rangers and uh, done by Joseph Kahn who for those of you familiar was responsible for doing the Dread movie. This has uh, James Vanderbeek in this movie and probably one of his best roles ever playing Rocky the Black Ranger. I won't spoil it for anybody as to what happens in there but you have to check this out. I've never been too much of an advocate of the American version of the Power Rangers because of its campiness that it's become as opposed to the theatrical version in Japan but uh, I think this not only just you know it wasn't for the sake of being gritty and dark it really answered a lot of questions and it really related to that of the first season in the original Power Rangers so definitely check it out it was taken down uh, because Heem Saban uh, you know the owner of the actual franchise and license uh, didn't approve of it I can understand uh, you know because of his review his philosophies and intentions for the franchise uh, and Jason David Frank also didn't approve of it as well who is the original Green Ranger for the American version of the Power Rangers but uh, just recently it's been put back up it was taken down from YouTube and Vimeo but they recently brought it back up with the uh, acceptance of Heem Saban himself. I don't know what uh, went into that in detail, but um, the internet won in this case. So you do now have a chance to check it out again. So uh, get it when you get a chance to check out the uh, Power Rangers bootleg version. And unfortunately, in other news, we've lost a major legend in pop culture, in sci-fi, and in geek culture alike. Uh, the great Leonard Nimoy died just recently uh, and you know he's been having problems a lot of health problems as of late he accepted it but he lived long and prosper he had a great and tremendous career we will always remember him for his roles in Spock uh, you know eternally uh, but my personal favorite and many of you who are Transformers fans remember him for being the original voice of Galvatron in Transformers the movie in 1984 or it's the six but um, you know for what it's worth he's lived a tremendous life uh, for the family and friends of Leonard Nimoy, uh, you know, prayers and thoughts are all to you and uh, live long and prosper, man. We uh, will never forget, we'll never forget it. And uh, that is all for now, guys. So we're just gonna run straight over to the playground.
Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in years, we may have a Dragon Ball Z game that actually is good. Not only good, but even great. Uh, one, even more, with this actual original storyline. So finally we get this. Enter Dragon Ball Xenoverse for the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, as well as the Xbox 360 and Xbox One. This game actually solves a lot of problems that plagued the last installment, which was Battle of Z, in so many ways. Uh, this game has a hybrid of different elements, such as MMO battling, melee fighting, fighting game elements as well as action RPG all combined to make this wonderful game with again an original storyline I can't stress this enough um, you know the story actually is based on you know it has a bit of kick uh, a little bit of mix of minority report meets ages of shield here Trunks plays the part of Nick Fury where he's the head of an organization of intergalactic agents known as the time patrollers along with the Kai of time the events of the DBZ universe has been altered by an unknown dark force. Trunks then uses the Dragon Balls to summon Shinron in order to wish for a person powerful enough to help fix the space-time continuum and bring the Dragon Ball Z universe back in order. This is indeed an interesting and fresh storyline to make things more enticing for the legendary franchise. Along with the new welcome story, we also have the new control scheme for the game as well. The controls for this game feels a bit more fluid as compared to Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z, a more simplistic setup with a well-balanced feel when controlling your characters. This may have a lot to do with game developer Dimps using an in-house engine which uses elements consisting of structures from Street Fighter 4, using also a Havoc engine uh, for physics, and the Yibis 3 for high quality optical effects. Another plus to this game is the artificial intelligence, which was one of the biggest problems of Battle of Z. Here we have a more sophisticated and comprehensive AI system that doesn't overwhelm your character when battling even in a large scale fight between one or even eight characters. And once again ladies and gentlemen, my PS4 controller scared the living shit as Trunks actually talks to you through the speaker of the PlayStation 4 controller while you're fighting. Now, I'll be backing you up from the time nest. Listen. This Raditz, he's stronger and crueler than his historical form. It woke my wife up multiple times, so it has its pluses. Another plus to Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse is in fact the RPG elements as well in level building. Again, they solve the problem of the convoluted and tedious card battle system that plagued Battle of Z. This time they provide a simple and user friendly customization system that you would use to level up your created character. Yes, DBZ fans, my favorite thing to do in any game is character creation, and this one has it. Not as deep as other fighters like WWE 2K series or you know any of the sports games, but enough to satisfy fans, uh, who, especially those who always wanted to create their own Akira Toriyama style character. And the color palette is deep enough that allows you to create skin tones of any race that you like. And not only are you able to strengthen your character's stats and power level, but you're also able to customize your own moveset as well. Yes, you too can have your very own Kamehameha Wave. One of the negatives, and minor negatives, at least at this time, will be that it lacks depth and content. Hopefully in time there will be DLC that will be coming out that will provide creative content and items to customize your characters, but for now, it is very satisfying and enjoyable. And for those of you who got the season pass, I have uh, no doubt that they'll be coming out with more content for you to customize your characters very soon. The other minor negative to this would be that due to the massive online experience that comes with Dragon Ball Z Xenoverse, it doesn't allow you to use remote play. Uh, that means only for those who have the PS Vita system, uh, which is not a total loss and it takes nothing away from the entire experience at all. And of course, all of your favorite good guys and bad guys from the Z series, including the movies, are here and will unlock as you progress through the game. So overall, in my opinion, I say this is the best Dragon Ball Z game since Dem's Budokai series by far. I am so happy with the results of this game that I started watching the series all over again, making this edition of Dragon Ball Z a solid A. So guys, if you haven't had a chance to see this yet, or even play this game yet, I highly recommend investing in it. If you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, you won't be disappointed at all. Get Dragon Ball Z Xeno first for the PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, as well as Xbox 360 and Xbox One. The scantily clad and kick-ass cast of DOA is back with Dead or Alive 5 last round for the PlayStation 3 and 4, as well as the Xbox 360 and 1. Uh, this 
entitled Last Round leads me to believe that this is going to be the final version of DOA 5 before they start producing the uh, six installments. So let's see what they did with this and how we actually like it. This version of Dead or Alive 5 consists of all of the characters from the previous version, including characters that appeared in the original arcade version, returning characters Rido, who is Ayana's father from the original series, uh, and now is back as a zombie uh, cyborg, and Hanukkah, who is a 18-year-old schoolgirl with really no connection to the characters or story arc at all. In fact, none of the additional characters have any real relation to the main story with the exception of Phase 4 which only shows up during the beginning of the modified CG scene of Dead or Alive 5. None of the new characters add anything to the main story, but that's not to say that they're totally useless as they are fun to play in other modes. Dead or Alive 5 last round has also added extra modes uh, such as Tag Team Mode, which I don't understand why it took them this long to add that on. If you own one of the current gen systems, you would know that there's an upgrade in graphics and frame rate. Both Xbox One and PlayStation 4 versions are running in 1080p resolution and 60 frames per second. Team Ninja has also added a new soft engine system, which is designed to depict softness of the characters' bodies, making this the most physically natural version of all DOA games. As if we need more reason to perv about this game anyway. Other editions of DOA 5 last round also provide you with more costumes, clothing options, hairstyles for you to choose from. But more on that later. Also added to the game is two new stages for you to choose from, along with some added bonus footage on the story mode with cutscenes that are not shown in the previous installments. For the most part, this game is still fun, fluid, fast paced, and a challenging fighter. However, Dead or Alive 5 Last Round isn't without its flaws. For one thing, the story, no matter how many times I played this game, does not ever make any sense to me. Team Ninja tries to create this Quentin Tarantino like storyline where it cuts different scenes out and fleshes them out throughout the story to all connect later on within the game. The big problem here is that there are two different storylines going on and it creates this convoluted pace that is very hard to follow. Not to mention the voice acting and the acting in general is just atrocious. Give you a special invitation to the Dead or Alive tournament. Hmm. Of course you have. But things go jiggle so somehow it hypnotizes people worse than the Russian Leviathan agent from Agent Carter. And the other major oh no to this game is the DLC. While you have the choice to buy the full version of Dead or Alive 5 last round with the story mode and arcade mode intact, there is a free downloadable version for the PlayStation 4 called Core Fighter and the Xbox version which is called One Trial which allows you to play four free characters and no attachments of storyline and other modes with them. You could buy a specific character if you like, as well as the story mode, or you can buy the full version for a pretty low price of $39.99. Not actually bad. The worst part of the DLC content is the extra clothes that you actually get to buy, which is nothing more than perved out gear for the ladies and some interesting clothing for the men. However, overall this is probably the most exclusive line of DLC skins and clothing wear that I've seen in any game ever. So much so that to buy the entire bundle you would have to pay a smack in the face price of $93.99. Are you freaking insane? Dear God, that is just the price of two to three games on PlayStation Plus. What the hell are they thinking here? Now why would anybody even in their left mind want to invest in content which is all nothing more than softcore porn wear for the women of Dead or Alive? Now that's not even the pervy sage style movies that they want you to buy and serves nothing more than to drool over 60 frames per second of women that you would never see the light of day in reality. So ladies and gentlemen, unless you want to reenact the part of Jack Juan Phoenix in the movie Her, you may want to keep your dignity as a man or a woman and go out and meet people the old fashioned way. Overall, Dead or Alive 5 Last Round is a fun fighter, and if you've never played the game before, or if you like the game and want to upgrade uh, and softness, I guess, yeah, this is the game for you. Otherwise, if you already own the previous game, you're better off sticking to that one, as this one adds nothing to the mix. And with that said, this actually just gets a B for me. And this letter B is not for boob as much as barely worth buying again. Ladies and gentlemen, that does it for this season of ACMG TV. I am your host, Xavier Josiah. 
Thank you also very much for always taking the time to check out this video or any videos that you ever had the chance to uh, check out. We, I definitely appreciate it. We, the admins, appreciate it. And uh, we appreciate all of you in the group itself. I mean, this is a great environment, a great place to stop by and enjoy everything that uh, we enjoy from anime, comics, movies, and games. And uh, it's not over, though. Um, we still got the Hall of Fame to go. We got some other things that we are definitely working hard on to get out and happening. So stay tuned for that. And a big congratulations to Quincy and Price who is our official first Omega Fish Champion Contest winner of 2015 along with Randy Green and Nate Rowe, who are the finalists as well as all of the participants who uh, made that event very memorable and we will be doing this again uh, as years go by so thank you all and thank you to our sponsor Print Heads uh, Custom Print and Design for not only providing us with the prize package but everything that is ACMG TV. Uh, we couldn't have done it without you. I uh, appreciate you guys definitely. Uh, you are great clients to me personally and uh, without a doubt. Uh, I'm looking forward to working with you guys more on uh, uh, many other things. So guys, that is it for now. Uh, thank you so very much. So stay tuned to more to come from ACMG. Take care.